Hello, YouTubers and various spam bots of the internet. <sighs> we can't get it on with a girlfriend. This is dumb. Come on. Number one. Just freaking go at it. <laughs> I'm still playing Depression Quest, if you couldn't tell with this little bar off to the left. Alright, alright. Here we go. That looks like a banister. Or a wooden wheel. I don't know. You look at her standing, barely lit, and notice there's a few candles scattered around the apartment. It occurs to you that she'd try to make this night special for the two of you. Even though you have a tight knot of antisocial frustration in your stomach, seeing how much she cares makes you want to try to melt it away so you can show her how much you care that she's gone through all this trouble. However, you desperately need to shift gears first before that's even possible. Exactly, like, you just need to take a deep breath, buddy. You look amazing. Let's have a drink together, you suggest, hoping that this will give you the push you need to get in the mood. You go into the kitchen and pour the two of you drinks, trying to focus on letting go of your bad mood. You sit down on the couch next to her and she cuddles up to you instantly. What should we toast to, she asks, as she takes her drink. You think for a moment, passing up the cheesy to us option. You say what's on your mind, letting go of your bad day. To tonight. The two of you cheers and you ask her about her day. Conversation turns flirtatious and the two of you find yourselves in the bedroom shortly after. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Pencils. It's an early winter evening and even though it's not particularly late, the time of the year has lent the sky to an almost prematurely darkened cast. Yeah. Day after day, just like today, you trudge home from a job you have increasingly come to hate. I've noticed that, and just by the prompts. And on this day, your job misery leads you to have reached critical mass, and not even shedding your rain-laden and uncomfortable work clothes helps you to unwind from your workday. <clears throat> you collapse into your couch, blank and numb. While your job always seemed to be just an unpleasant reality of existence, it was a position you sort of fell into unexpectedly, never intending to work there long term, and it's getting harder and harder to keep it up. While it's certainly not your dream job, you've always just sort of stuck it out, out of necessity. But it's becoming increasingly difficult to do that. Though you couldn't even begin to imagine what else you could do. You find yourself face to face with a question you just can't ignore. Is your complacency worth the price of this level of misery? Get proactive, polish off your resume, and start looking for other jobs. Try at least be productive by focusing your efforts on your project tonight. Aimlessly look through classifieds, turn on TV, and let your mind go blank. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, you gotta start somewhere. You boot up a computer and navigate to the local Craigslist. That's not what I meant. You sift through a myriad of legitimate postings, clear pyramid scams, and the occasional miscategorized random personal ad. You look through the section that is in line with your current job and start feeling a bit of despair. Would things really be any different if you were simply doing the same thing somewhere else? Can you email your resume to a few of the postings after coming up with a cover letter that you can use for a variety of things? After you've exhausted the postings in the last few days, you head back to the main page. There's a section that's more in line with the project you've been doing, though it's a highly competitive creative field that you don't feel remotely qualified for. Despite that, you click on the section. Scrolling through the postings, you daydream about actually holding a position where you would get to do something that's more meaningful. Despite feeling completely intimidated by the requirements, you find a listing you actually want to apply for. You spend an hour crafting a really personal cover le letter and really giving your all to the task of nervously send off the email. You're rather convinced you'll never hear back from any of these places, but the act of trying to change your situation instead of stewing on it actually feels quite freeing. You find yourself trying to stifle the hope that you end up getting the creative job, but still manages to bubble up anyway. Oh dang, it went up again! Yeah! You're moderately depressed, you find it hard to focus on anything because you get physically and mentally exhausted very quickly. You're in therapy with a good counselor, you're doing cognitive behavioral therapy techniques and they're starting to help. Heck yeah! <laughs> okay. It's a little past 8 p.m. on Tuesday night. You're at your computer, frustration levels peaked, rubbing your eyes and sighing heavily. You're working on a project from your job that has you stretched to wit's end trying to meet a looming deadline, and as it lurks closer and closer, you're seriously doubting your ability to get it done. You've been- you've dragging- 
No, pardon me. There should be a bin there. You've been dragging your feet a little at work due to your complete lack of energy lately, in spite of wanting to do a good job. You find yourself unable to push past it and feel horribly useless for it. You slide your hands off your face to look at your screen as it beeps at you. Attic. Hey, are you there? I really need to talk to someone about something. You feel like you're getting nowhere with your current task and could probably use a break. However, you know that you have a history of getting distracted and losing motivation to pick something up again afterward. What do you do? <laughs> Multitask is scratched off. Um... No. Answer. Yeah. You're feeling like you've been- like you've hit a brick wall with your task, so why not take a break and help out a friend? Hey, what's up? Oh, good you're there. Um, I just found out that I got cheated on. I don't know what to do. Oh, that's horrible. That is horrible. That's so sad. The two of you talk for a long time and you lend a shoulder to your friend. You give him space to rant, to cry, and most importantly to be able to voice his inner turmoil. You give him your full attention and talk him through what his opinions, options are for what he does next. You keep him from doing something rash and the two of you decide it's best for him to sleep on it before doing anything. Exhausted, he departs for bed and asks you to, and thanks you for being there to talk with him. As you close the eye and window, you feel horribly sorry for your friend, but happy that you're able to help. It serves as a tangible reminder to you that you're capable of being useful, useful to someone instead of solely being a mess that needs everyone else's help. You boot up your work project and find that you're suddenly able to get some solid progress done on it that night. Yeah! Heck yeah! You're moderately depressed. Oh, I already read that. There's that nice, comfy looking fabric again. It's yet another sleepless Thursday night. You're at Alex's apartment, wide awake in bed as she's sleeping peacefully beside you. She fell asleep hours ago and you've been laying there unable to shut your brain up long enough to fall asleep. You've added the feelings of insecurity about your relationship to, rest, to the rest of the noise in your head keeping you up tonight. It was kind of tense. It was kind of a tense night between the two of you. You arrived after a stressful day at work and you made dinner together. You barely said a word. As you, God, I cannot read. Ugh. You're stuck in your own head and had a hard time really being present with her as your thoughts turn to all the ways you feel like you're deficient at being a good person and beating yourself up mentally for each one. She told you she could help. She could tell you were in one of your moods and said that she wouldn't push you, but missed talking to you as the two of you sat on the couch together. You wanted to tell her how much you love her, but you couldn't make the words come out right and ended up sounding defensive instead. As you lay there next to her now, you trace your fingers across her arm, just lightly enough not to wake her. You still haven't explained your depression to her, or how you s started seeing a therapist, and it's starting to feel more and more like a secret you're keeping instead of something she simply doesn't need to know about you yet. It's becoming more and more apparent that it's impacting your relationship with her, and you feel guilty about this. However, you're also terrified that if she knew exactly how effed up you were, that she would leave you. You already worry that she's only with you because she doesn't realize how terrible of a person you are yet, and you're afraid that this would be the final thing to expose you. She stirs in her sleep and squints as she opens her eyes. With the confusion that comes with waking up, she asks you if you're awake and then if everything's okay. You're not a terrible person just because you're depressed. You feel like a jerk for accidentally waking her up, and you're afraid if you put this off any longer then you won't find the strength to tell her anything later. No, actually, everything isn't okay. Can I tell you something? Something important? Alex sits up, rubbing the sleep out of her eyes. For the rest of the night, you lay side by side, holding hands, and you tell her everything. You tell her how it's more than just feeling sad sometimes, and you feel triped by your own mind. Sometimes, how you feel nothing at all, and how you can't shake it off. Tell her about how you started going to therapy, how you feel embarrassed about it, and how it's working out for you. She listens the entire time, occasionally asking questions about how this or that works, or asking you to explain something further. She squeezes your hand and tells you she understands, and that she's sad you didn't tell her sooner. After laying silent for a moment, the weight of what you did hits you. You desperately want her to say something, to tell you how she's feeling about all of this, but you're too afraid of what the answer would be to ask. You start convincing yourself that now that she knows everything, she's going to leave, so there's no way someone could deal with how you really are. I'm out of time! We're gonna have to finish this in the next episode, uh. Okay. Till next time. Bye bye